the houses were tastefully built around the turn of the 20th century with large gardens and sweeping trees. Caroline's driver stared ahead, his peak cap perfectly mounted on his young head. Very quickly the houses got smaller as it dawned on her the proximity of slum dwellings to those of the well-off. She wanted to ask her driver why people had to live in such squalid conditions but couldn't muster the words. Instead, she stared out in horror, knowing that her air-conditioned BMW would take her to a comfortable hotel for a pharmaceutical conference and that she would experience nothing but deference and ease. She also knew that she had never visited India, and so she asked herself, how come the place was so vivid? Why was a dead body that might have looked like someone she recognised lying by the roadside while the driver sped on? Caroline, Caroline, you're... In her mind, the vision was being torn down as a thumping headache and blinding light brought her brusquely back to a world that was unfamiliar and sterile. She's back. Well done, nurse, said a voice she did not know in a white coat. This was all starting to stack up for her now. Some smiling, and a couple of stern faces met her blinking eyes. Caroline, you've been asleep for quite a while. Well, two months, in fact, said a softly spoken nurse. You're in hospital. A man who looked like he was in charge <clears throat> cleared his throat. She shifted uncomfortably in her bed, realising that both her legs were in casts. You were involved in a road traffic incident. Darren, she croaked, realising her voice hardly worked and that her mouth was horrendously dehydrated. The nurse brought a cup of water to her lips and she sipped it slower than a baby. I'm afraid you sustained a lot of injuries, which I'll explain later. The main thing for you to do is to concentrate on your recovery, shifting his gaze to the nurse. I'm sorry to tell you, but Darren didn't make it. The nurse had tears in her eyes. The car struck a tree and your partner died at the scene, I'm afraid. The doctor <clears throat> again cleared his throat. You were put into a medically induced coma to help with head trauma. We also had to operate on your legs. Unfortunately, classic cars don't have the safety features of modern vehicles. When you're well enough, we'll be getting started on your physio. After the damage to your legs, you may need their assistance to help you with walking again. Caroline took this in slowly, but in her heart she knew what had happened to Darren. He had always bragged about how great his 1953 Jupiter was, even though he had only put in lap belts at her behest. It was about as safe as sunbathing in ancient Pompeii while Mount Vesuvius rumbled in the distance. Fifteen minutes later, her mother bustled through the medics. Her tears of joy setting Caroline off on extended weeping as they embraced. Her confusion at being alive, but knowing she had lost her fiancé, ached more than her head. She had tea brought to her and tried her first spoonful of jelly. Not since she was a kid getting her tonsils taken out had she been on a hospital bed. She remembered being in a ward aged seven with three other kids. This was her own room and it was full of machinery and beeping. The nurse started unplugging some of it as her mother filled her in on what had been happening over the past two months, most of which she could barely absorb. 
It seemed like a fiction story that a Labour Prime Minister had gotten in with a landslide victory and all those Thatcher and Major years were now a memory. Harrogate is going to thrive again under this young Tony Blair, her mother said excitedly, getting carried away with herself as Caroline's face betrayed that she was thinking of Darren. How am I meant to live without him, Mum? She sobbed. I know, love. I'm so sorry. Taking her hand and squeezing it gently. What month is it now, Mum? May, darling. Smiling weakly at her distressed daughter. We would have been getting married in another two months. As tears continued to stream down her cheeks. Her mother picked up the unfinished jelly and cold tea from the bed tray. I'll get us a nice fresh cup of each, love. And then we'll let you get some rest. I take it his funeral has been and gone. Oh, uh, yes, it was mainly a family affair. You didn't go, Mum. I couldn't leave you at the time. It was touch and go with you back then, Caroline. He was gone. But I didn't know if you'd make it. Her voice shaking. I'll be back, back shortly, love. Outside the room, Caroline's mother was approached by the doctor. Is she resting now? He asked. <sighs> Poor thing is heartbroken. She's had no idea about anything for the past two months. She's mightily confused about why I didn't go to her fiancé's funeral. Ah, yes. Him. He paused briefly. These comas can be a real shock to the patient when they come out of it. Your daughter will have a lot of work ahead of her to walk again. Doctor, at what point do I break it to her? She was trembling. That the bastard was drunk when he wrapped my girl around that bloody great big tree, 